If you're a wife and mom, you know the struggle is real when it comes to cooking meals for your family every day. I'll confess there are times that I would start in the kitchen with peace and joy, to then feeling defeated, frustrated, and resentful for the needs of my children. I behave like Mary when I yearn to be more like Martha. As a Christian homemaker, that convicts me. I know what may temporarily feel like a chore is actually a privilege because of all the blessings that I have been given to steward as a wife and mother. I want to be the best version of myself for my family, a joyful wife who provides nourishing meals and a loving mother who isn't burdened by the stress of homemaking. God doesn't want us to be overwhelmed or resentful in our homemaking. He desires for us to find joy and fulfillment in serving our families. So I began searching for ways to reclaim that joy in the kitchen. In today's video, I'm sharing practical tips to minimize kitchen frustration and help you rediscover the joy of cooking as an act of worship, blessing your family, and honoring God's provision. I pray this inspires you to reclaim your purpose as a homemaker and create a kitchen filled with peace and joy in Jesus' name. This is why I feel so passionate about systems in the home to be efficient and thoughtful that goes with the flow of our lives instead of against it. Motherhood and homemaking can be a much more pleasant experience when we give ourselves the time to be thoughtful and intentional. You may not know, but I haven't always enjoyed cooking from scratch. Things changed earlier this year when I officially became a stay-at-home and homemaker after resigning from a job I really love. Being present at home more meant I could finally prioritize healthy, homemade meals for my family, so I started cooking from scratch much more frequently. Maybe you're the same, but I personally like to challenge myself to level up my homemaking, especially in the kitchen. The extra mental capacity I have as a full-time homemaker means I have the brain power to not just plan my day more thoughtfully, but I can analyze my home systems and find ways to continuously refine and improve them. There are so many challenges that we face when cooking with young children around and they are so unique to our individual circumstances and lives. Some days are nearly impossible when you have a sick child, an overtired baby that refuses to take a nap, or even our own mental well-being as homemakers. When I'm feeling defeated, I pray over myself Philippians 4.13. I can do all this through him who gives me strength. It may sound so simple, but do you ever meditate on the fact that the same Holy Spirit that raised Jesus from the dead is the same Holy Spirit that lives in you? I guarantee when you make that connection, nothing will feel too big for our God to do in our lives. He equips us with the strength and grace we need to face each day, even in the kitchen. My name is Daisy. I'm a wife and mama of two boys ages two and six months. I'm here to encourage you in motherhood and help you find purpose in the mundane aspects of homemaking. I'm so grateful that you're here. Before we get to the practical cooking tips, let's talk about what we can do to set ourselves up for success. Making sure my kids' physical and emotional needs are met before starting to cook can dramatically change my time in the kitchen. Have I spent enough quality time playing with my children? Do they need a diaper change, a snack, or time outdoors to burn off energy? Answering those simple questions can often leave you with a pretty good look into the likelihood of how well your time in the kitchen will go. Giving them enough quality time with you before you start cooking dramatically changes the way that they are able to independently play. A child whose cup is full is way more likely to happily entertain themselves while you're busy cooking. 
I've definitely noticed that my toddler is not only happier, but I notice significantly less tantrums when I'm in the kitchen after spending playtime with him. I have discovered a few activities that he can easily spend at least 20 minutes of uninterrupted time doing. For my toddler, it's often sitting at the kitchen table coloring. This is probably the best hack that I have. I love doing this because he's in eyesight of me and I can keep a few coloring books and sticker books on rotation in case he gets bored of one. If you haven't done this before, I highly encourage you to give it a go. I'd love to know what activities your children can do for extended amounts of time that I could try to. There are special days that I will actually invite my toddler to join me in the kitchen. I involve him in age-appropriate tasks like stirring or measuring with my help. I've come to realize that sometimes he honestly just wants to be in my presence and spend time together no matter what we're doing. It's actually quite sweet and I love the memories we build when we do this, even if it gets messy. This also allows me to know exactly where he is instead of stressing about what he's up to and making sure he's safe. I also firmly believe that including them in activities like this will help empower them and give them confidence to be productive members of the household as they get older and more capable. Distributing your prep and cook time over a longer period is a huge time saver in the kitchen. I personally do this by pre-cutting my most used veggies and freeze them for a super quick meal prep. I do this with bell peppers, zucchini, and mushrooms oftentimes. I also make large batches of rice for quinoa, which are super easy side dishes that can be used throughout the week. As much as I have been loving to try new recipes, I'm learning to embrace the no recipe approach. This means simplifying recipes by trusting my God-given intuition and cooking what my family enjoys. Even if you don't have all the ingredients for a recipe, it's likely to still be delicious and your family might not even notice the difference. I've actually done this for a few recipes and it has literally taken a huge weight off me when I know I don't have to run to the grocery store for just an ingredient or two. My advice is to focus on learning the spices and flavor combinations that you prefer and create dishes that you can easily cook. One pan recipes are a huge lifesaver for me. I often cook all the meat first, set it aside, and then cook the veggies in the same pan to minimize mess. This brings me to my next point, cleaning as you go. This is a true game changer. Instead of facing a ton of dishes after cooking, try to clean up as you go. While your meat is cooking, use those few minutes to put away ingredients or wash any dishes you're done with. This keeps the kitchen more manageable and reduces overwhelm. The best feeling is finishing a meal and having a clean kitchen already. I've learned that it's not just about the mess, it's about creating mental space for joy and peace in our hearts that will inevitably affect our attitudes and behavior towards our families. As Proverbs 4.23 reminds us, Above all else, guard your heart, for everything you do flows from it. Our attitudes, our actions, our interactions with our families, all of it stems from the condition of our hearts. When we're overwhelmed and stressed, it's easy to let frustration and negativity consume us. But when we cultivate a peaceful heart, we're able to pour out our love and joy onto those around us. Remember, you're not alone in this journey. God is with you always, even in your kitchen, and he wants to bring you peace and joy even in the midst of the chaos. I invite you to share your challenges in the kitchen below so that we can help find solutions together. If you're still listening, I personally invite you to take a moment to read the comments and offer a word of encouragement, a helpful tip, or a scripture to another mama. Your engagement in the comments not only encourages me to continue making Christian content, but it also helps other women looking for fellowship and biblical content find this video and hopefully it blesses them too. 
I'd love to continue sharing my journey as a homemaker with you. If you're looking for more encouragement and inspiration in your homemaking, be sure to check out my other videos on homemaking just like this. If this video was a blessing to you, please give it a like and subscribe for more Christian homemaking and motherhood content. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.